Hello guys, once again, I'm Ashley Stovall. I'm an abstract uh, painter here in Statesville, and I'm back today with another lesson, guys, where I'm gonna to talk to y'all about doing some abstract art using something that's around the house and it's gonna give you a different touch to your work. And what that is, is just a roll of tape. And I'm gonna show you guys how we can use this roll of tape to create some abstract thing and also, also some organic shapes that can uh, really make your artwork cool. Um, first and foremost, as always, it's a great day to be great. So what I'm going to do first, of course, is I'm going to pick a color. And the great thing about what we're doing today, and it, that it's abstract, is it's really what you want to do. As I always say, and you're going to hear me say it, anytime you watch a video, it's always going to be an element of code green, which means use your imagination. So we're going to use our imagination. I'm going to pick a color. You can pick a color too if you're coming along or you're going along with us. And I think today, what I'm going to start off with is one of my favorite colors. which is green. Um, so we're gonna add a little green. It's Christmas green here. And step one is, I'm just going to apply it to my canvas right here. It's a really nice green. There's no right or wrong answer. And I'm gonna show you guys why in a minute. notice I'm doing vertical strokes right now vertical going up and down you can also tell in some areas it's a little bit heavier right now than it is in other which is going to be perfectly fine when you see what we do now what I'm going to do as well is Added some green right there. No, I haven't completed the canvas. Now what I'm gonna do with the green that I have on my on my paper, paper plate, excuse me, I'm gonna add some white, which is gonna create a tint, all right? Which is another cool effect of just adding white or creates tints of colors and add black creates shades. So what I'm gonna do is just mix this up. And I really like working with tints and working with shades. It creates a type of movement within your color and your choices. Here. Now what I'm gonna also do is I'm gonna turn this from vertical as it is now. I'm gonna turn this horizontal, guys but I'm still gonna do vertical strokes. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm kind of creating some pattern and some flow already. And what I mean by pattern or flow, it kind of, it, it really references to how your eyes move through something, not just a canvas because we often look at art as something that we just see in museum but I like to tell people if you look down at your shoes more than likely you're looking at some type of art some type of creativity if you look at your outfit that is your art um, art is all around us um, if you go outside you look at some a tree and how unique it is and how it's one of a kind and there's no other kind like it that's art so Really cool. Don't be afraid to open up your eyes and see art sometimes, man. It's, it's really neat. So that's what I got here. And if you notice, it's got a couple different colors of greens. I still have some white space right now, which is going to be perfectly fine. Now, what I'm going to do now, set my paint aside. I'm going to pull out this here. All right. so. This is what's called painter tape. It's a blue tape. Usually I've never seen painter tape in any other color. I know they do make it, but it's kind of thin, as you can see here also. 
And what's great about this is it's not going to pull the paint or it's not going to pull the canvas off. So sometimes you can have some, some tape that's too thick or it's too sticky and it will end up damaging. So you want to use some thin, maybe masking tape, but masking tape can leak the paint up under it. Um, but I found that this good old roll of painter's tape works well. Now you're going to say, what am I going to do with it? Tear pieces off. And if you notice, it's really wide. I could leave it as wide as this. But what I'm going to do is, to give it even a cooler effect, is I'm just going to slowly bend and rip. All right? So if you notice, my edge is not perfect. It's cool. It's abstract. Now, usually when I would do this, I'd let it sit for a good 15 to 20 minutes just to let make sure it all dries. I don't really think it's going to affect it pretty much, or it won't. So you can, if you got a moment, let it sit for a while, maybe 10 minutes or so, just to let your colors dry. And then what you guys will do is, let's go here, and you can put these any kind of way you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here. about the diagonal. Then I'm going to take this piece here. And do this. Again, there's no such thing the wrong way to do this. All right, you don't have to tear the tape. You can leave the tape exactly how it is. Um, what I like to do is too is I'll stick it on the table somewhere where I can let it hang. And then I will go here. Also, I like to press my finger against the tape to make sure that it's on there hard so it creates a hard edge. I always like to leave a snip, a bigger piece hanging off so it's easier for you to pull off. Come back with it. Some of my favorite abstract artists, artists, excuse me, it's like, you know, of course I'm a Basquiat fan. If you don't know who Basquiat is, Trust me, do, do yourself a favor and look up Basquiat. Um, he's probably one of the most known in modern era of art. Um, pretty neat. Some of his work is in some of the, you know, the most known museums in the world. And um, definitely a fan of his work. Where I originally got this idea from is trash. Um, if you look at trash sometimes, you'll see patterns and you'll see things that are created within trash that you would be surprised that are really there. All right, so one other thing is I would like to keep all of my shapes well, excuse me, I'm gonna make create shapes right here. And you'll notice I start creating the shapes and they start coming together pretty neatly. Um, just tear and rip. Again, there's no wrong way to do this. And some people might say, well, I know what he's doing. It's great, man. All right, so a couple more pieces here. Definitely think I'm gonna run it across here. And I think I'll run it here. All right, guys, so if you can see, This is what it looks like now. So you remember, so far what we did was we put 
two shades. Well, we put a green on, then we added a little white to create the tint. And we went vertical and horizontal strokes with it. Now what we did was we put some tape on it, made sure that the tape was secure to the canvas because we don't want it to leak. And if it does, it's okay. Art doesn't have to be perfect as long as it means something to you. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna grab another color. Um, being in which this time of year is a springtime, I feel like it's only right maybe to use some, just a tad of yellow. And literally, I mean a tad, because I did not bring yellow with me today. The great thing for the people that do know primary colors. If it's a secondary color, you can make it. If it is a primary color, you can't. Yellow is a primary color, so we're just going to add it where I want it. So it goes like this. I'm going to put some here. And the thing about adding a lighter color over a darker color, guys, it's going to show. You're going to have to come back over it maybe a couple times. Or if you want, you can just let it show. And what I mean by that is the green that's coming through. I always like to paint the sides of my canvas, not necessarily all the way, but I like to give it a little attitude or a little, little something that catch people's eyes just because they might see the side of the canvas first. So I'll let some color run off. Just gonna double this up here. And I kind of like how it comes through. The green is coming through. And you can pick whatever color you want. If you want some yellow, you want some green, if you want anything up here, you know, just some good ideas. And this is a great example of trying to color over a darker color with a lighter color, you can see exactly what happens. So I just usually um, start with your lighter colors and move to your darker colors. But in the world of abstract, it's really about doing what you want, how you feel. Now what I realized here is that I forgot to close this box off here, which is no problem. One, that's what we have is tape for there, and there we go. So now, close that up, make sure our tape is secure. Then I'm going to add some, let's see, I'll add some a different color. I think I might add some blue or some red. I'm gonna do something else with the red, I think. Make sure that you stay within that area, guys. And you can do this on any type of paper or canvas. You can actually do this same thing with crayons. You can do this with colored pencils. Just get you a little bit of tape or make your own lines. Tape definitely works well, but I've done this before where I didn't have tape or I didn't have um, something. I just tried my best to stay within the lines. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I am gonna add some blue. You might say, well, where are you going to put your blue? Let's go here with the blue. In fact, 
Just to have this. I really love these these paper plates. They come in great for mixing and just maneuvering the colors around and blending the colors. Pretty neat and cheap. And if you notice, guys, when I put the blue, which is a darker color, in the green, it takes less paint. It's, it doesn't show up as much just because it's easier. It's a great thing to remember. It's always easier to put a darker color on top of a lighter color than vice versa. It's definitely possible, and you can do it. And it's okay if you get paint on the tape, perfectly fine. Um, it's coming along great. Now, I actually like to paint up flat um, compared instead of being on the canvas. I just like the feel of it. Um, it's easy to work with sometimes. But for tutorial purposes, I will do this. Because I'm here to help you guys learn and be creative. Something I enjoy, man. I truly do. About finished. I might add one more color to it. Yeah, I think we need like some red or something. What you guys think? Thumbs up for the red. All right, we might do some red. Yeah. You know, one of the colors I usually don't paint a lot with is just basic white. <laughs> it's funny how I mix it with a lot of colors. I love tints and I love shades, but I don't really use a lot of white unless I'm doing something with some eyes, which kind of give them away what we're going to end up doing with this, but I want to show you. How many of you guys know if I mix blue and yellow together, what color I get? Right, green. So it's kind of cool that we work with those colors. And they're part of a color family. And it's pretty cool. So what we're going to do now is we're going to let this, I'm going to add some red, come back, um, let it dry for a couple minutes because we're going to add one more piece when we take off the tape. And I'll see what we do then, all right? So yeah, we're definitely going to add I'm going to um, add some red, just a little bit, and then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it dry for a couple minutes, and then we'll look at it and see where we can take it from there, all right? All right, guys, so I'm back now. As you notice, 
My words are not matching up with my mouth, right? You see, it is very different. So what happened is called technical difficulties. I do not know what happened. So I'm going to give you the play-by-play -play of what I was trying to say. I don't know why, but sometimes life happens. And guess what? You got to make lemonade out of it. So as you can see here, what I'm doing now is just coloring in the shapes. If you recall, what we started off with was just using a little tape, guys. And what happened was we would create the organic shape using organic shapes using the tape. Came out pretty cool. Um, used a lot of different colors in there. And what I'm doing right now is going through and just really cleaning up and going over some of the colors. And now it looks like I am about to start pulling the tape off. So I'm going to pull the tape off here and you can notice it that what it's going to do now is create the shapes. Now, I'll tell you one thing I wish I would did. Looking at it was just pressed even harder on the tape. And um, if you're doing this and you're going along, make sure that you press really hard down on that tape and um, use some good painter tape because it really will make a difference. And you can start learning how to bend the tape and really manipulate it and create some really cool things. So that's what I'm doing here. You'll see just taking off the tape and looking around the room. Uh, yes, he is. Uh, that piece came off easy. <laughs> uh, but that's all I'm doing here, guys, is just going to pull that off. And right there. Let's see here. And make sure I didn't do a good job of leaving the edges of the tape extra long on the sides so that way it's easier for you to pull it off. Um, it really makes a big difference as far as getting the tape off because the, the paint kind of works like glue in a sense it makes it even stickier to pull off. Um, but you can start seeing it. And I really work with a lot of different tints, a lot of different shades. And one thing that I would suggest doing, guys, is after you finish it, you can go back over your shapes with like a black or a white or any color you want to and just outline them. It makes your shape stand out a little bit more. And I think that's what I will eventually do to this piece. Um, let's see here. Got some more coming off. Right there, and it's not about being perfect, it's always about trying and, and using your imagination. Never forget that, okay? Let's see here, and I'm gonna continue to pull it and make sure when you do put the tape on there that you have long strips because you'll notice right now I'm having some problems with it's called technical difficulties. I've had some with this video, as you can hear me talking, and my words are not matching my mouth, <laughs> but. We are definitely learning as we go. It's part of life. So let's see here. I'm gonna to continue to try to get the tape off. And it's little pieces and because I have like pretty big hands, sometimes it's hard for me to get small things off and I really bite my fingernails so it's pretty tough. But like I said, guys, I definitely will go back over with some black and probably just outline your, my shapes, and I suggest you doing that as well if you want to. You don't have to use black. You can use any color you want. And again, you can do this same thing with markers. You can do this with crayons. You can do this with a color pencil. You can do this activity with anything that you might have if you don't have paint at home, okay? see here if I try to get it off and again guys um, you can turn it either way you want but I always want you to remember that it's a great day to be great and this is uh, just some some artwork using your imagination all right never forget that you have greatness in you it's up to you to show it all right